Good morning, 6.30. It's Miss Carreri here, coming with the next episode of Dear Mr. Henshaw. We are up to page 103. Uh, just to give you a recap, Lee Botts set off his own alarm in the cafeteria last time by opening his lunchbox. He thought for sure he was going to catch the thief, but his alarm didn't go off, which means no one touched it. So in the cafeteria at lunchtime, he was so hungry, he had to open up his own lunchbox. He opened it, everybody heard the alarm, and they started coming over to him and they were really impressed that his alarm worked. So let's see what we're up to now. Last time he said that he had found good use for the $20, even if it couldn't all go toward a typewriter. I didn't say much. I wonder if dad will marry the pizza boy and his mother. I worry about that a lot. Thursday, March 15th. This week, several kids turned up with lunch boxes with burglar alarms. You know that song about the hills ringing with the sound of music? Well, you might say our cafeteria rang with the sound of burglar alarms. The fad didn't last very long, and after a while, I didn't even bother to set my alarm. Nobody has robbed my lunchbox since I set it off that day. I never did find out who the thief was, and now that I stopped to think about it, I'm glad. If he had set off the alarm when my lunchbox was in the classroom, he would have been in trouble, big trouble. Maybe he was just somebody whose mother packed bad lunches. Jelly sandwiches on that white bread that tastes like Kleenex tissues. Or maybe he had to pack his own lunches and there was never anything good in the house to put in them. I have seen people look into their lunches, take out the cookies and throw the rest in the garbage. Mr. Friedley always looks worried when they do this. I'm not saying robbing lunchboxes is right. I am saying I'm glad I don't know who the thief was because I have to go to school with him. Friday, March 16th. Tonight I was starting a piece. <clears throat> Tonight I was staring at a piece of paper trying to think of something to write for young writers when the phone rang. Mom told me to answer because she was washing her hair. It was dad. My stomach felt as if it was dropping to the floor, the way it always does when I hear his voice. How are you doing, kid? He asked. Fine, I said, thinking of the success of the burglar alarm. Great. I got your letter, he said. That's good, I said. His call took me so by surprise that I could feel my heart pounding and I couldn't think of anything to say until I asked. <clears throat> <clears throat> have you found another dog to take Bandit's place? I think what I really meant was, have you found another boy to take my place? No, but I asked about him on my CB, Dad told me. He may turn up still yet. I hope so. This conversation was going no place. I really didn't know what to say to my father. It was embarrassing. Then Dad surprised me. He asked, do you ever miss your old dad? I had to think a minute. I missed him all right, but I couldn't seem to get the words out. My silence must have bothered him because he asked, are you still there? Sure, dad, I miss you, I told him. It was true, but not as true as it had been a couple of months ago. I still wanted him to pull up in front of the house in his big rig, but now I knew I couldn't count on it. Sorry. I don't get over you your way more often. I don't get over your way more often, he said. I hear the sugar refinery in Spreckles is closing down. I read about it in the paper, I said. Is your mother handy, he asked. I'll see. I said even though by then she was standing by the phone with her hair wrapped in a towel, she shook her head. She didn't want to talk to dad. She's washing her hair, I said. Tell her I'll, I'll manage to send your support check sometime next week, he said. So long, kid. Keep your nose clean. So long, Dad, I answered. Drive carefully. I guess I'll never learn that my name is Lee and that my nose is clean. Maybe he thinks I'll never learn that he drives carefully. He doesn't really. He's a good driver, but the speeds to make time whenever he can avoid the highway patrol, all truckers do. 
After that, I couldn't get back to thinking about young writers, so I picked up Ways to Amuse a Dog and read it for the thousandth time. I read harder books now, but I still feel good when I read that book. I wonder where Mr. Henshaw is. Saturday, March 17th. Today is Saturday, so this morning I walked to the butterfly trees again. The grove was quiet and peaceful, and because the sun was shining, I stood there a long time looking at the orange butterflies floating through the gray and green leaves and listening to the sounds of the ocean on the rocks. There aren't as many butterflies now. Maybe they're st starting to go north for the summer. I thought I might write about them in prose instead of poetry. But on the way home, I got thinking about dad. And one time when he took me along, when he was hauling grapes to a winery, and what a great day it had been. Tuesday, March 20th. Yesterday, Miss Neely, the librarian, asked if I had written anything for the Young Writer's Yearbook because all writing had to be turned in tomorrow. When I told her I hadn't, she said I still had 24 hours and why didn't I get busy? So I did, because I really would like to meet a famous author. My story about the 10-foot wax man went into the wastebasket. Next, I tried to start a story called The Great Lunchbox Mystery but I couldn't seem to turn my lunchbox experience into a story because I don't know who the thieves was or were, and I don't want to know. Finally, I dashed off a description of the time I rode with my father when he was trucking the, the load of grapes down Highway 150 through, 152 through Pacheco Pass to a winery. I put in things like the signs that said steep grade, trucks use low gear, and how dad had shifted down and how skillful he was handling a long, heavy load on the curves. I put in about the hawks on the telephone wires and about the high peak where Black Bart's lookout used to watch for travelers coming through the pass so he could signal to Black Bart to rob them and how the leaves on the tree along the stream at the bottom of the pass were turning yellow and how good tons of grapes smelled in the sun. I left out the part about the waitress and the video games. Then I copied the whole thing over in case neatness, counts, and gave it to Miss Neely. Copied it over to be extra neat. Saturday, March 24th. Mom said I had to invite Barry over to our house for supper because I have been going to his house after school so often. We had been working on a burglar alarm for his room, which we finally got to work with some help from a library book. I wasn't sure Barry would like to come to our house, which is so small compared to his, but he accepted when I invited him. Mom cooked a casserole full of good things like ground beef, chilies, tortillas, tomatoes, and cheese. Barry said he really liked eating at our house because he got tired of eating with a bunch of little sisters waving spoons and drumsticks. That made me happy. It helps to have a friend. Barry says his burglar alarm still works. The trouble is his little sisters think it's fun to open the door to set it off. Then they giggle and laugh and hide. This was driving his mother crazy, so he finally had to disconnect it. We all laughed about this. Barry and I felt good about making something that worked even if we couldn't use it. Barry saw the sign on my door that said, keep out mom, that means you. He asked if my mom really stays out of my room. I said, sure, if I keep things picked up in there. Mom is not a snoop. Barry said he wished he could have a room nobody ever went into. I was glad Barry didn't ask to use the bathroom. Maybe I'll start scrubbing off the mildew after all. Sunday, March 25th. I keep thinking about dad and how lonely he sounded and wondering about what happened to the pizza boy I don't like to think about dad being lonely, but I don't like to think about the pizza boy cheering him up either. We're gonna stop there today. We're on page 111. Have a wonderful day. We'll have discussion questions about Lee Bots. Please answer them in complete sentences and put the numbers. 6.30, I miss you dearly. I can't wait to see everybody's face someday and you're loved, you're missed, you're wonderful.